You're good. You're, You're on. Good. Sorry, my name is Michael Piper, and I'm the direct housing group supervisor uh, for this mission down here um, in Florida. Okay. So I, I have to start right off the bat and ask you this question about, about the housing. Like, there was a fee, like, it was like Christmas the other day because there was a FEMA trailer on Fort Myers Beach, and the mayor went down in front of the FEMA trailer, and they did a nice video, and then NBC2 or whoever the TV station was found out that the FEMA trailer – first of all, it was locked, and second of all, it was in the wrong spot. So how did that happen? How can something like that happen? With, it, with You got 20 people, you got all these people down here helping. How, how did that happen? Yeah, so one of the, one of the ch big challenges in, in uh, county, as you probably know, is that um, we do things by zip code and addresses. Uh, what's in unincorporated Lee County on the other side of the bridge still might be at an address that says Fort Myers Beach. So uh, our team in permitting, um, it, that, that individual, we've already spoken to that individual, um, they're happy with the outcome. They will get a travel trailer. Um, so one of the things we can talk about is our, our program and, and what we've been working to get, get accomplished. But, um, um, basically that, that trailer is not a trailer that could be on the, that particular unit could not be on this on Fort Myers beach. So we're going to replace it with a travel trailer. Right. But how did, but how did the trailer wind up in that spot? Like how does, how does the communication break down so much that that trailer winds up in that spot? In terms, in terms of how that trailer got there, yeah, it's just it is a just unfortunate mis miscommunication in our permitting team. I see, and th and then on top of that, it was locked for two weeks. Like the guy couldn't get in it. Yeah, so so when we put trailers on on any particular spot, uh, we have to work through environmental issues. We have to work with the utility companies. I see. We have to make sure that this power, the the water, the sewer, and the electrical can be hooked up, and and we have a great partnership on uh, Fort Myers Beach with uh, Florida Power and Light. To, to get that uh, power installed. They also okay. have to all be gotcha. inspected by the permitting folks. L here. Last question about that trailer. Like the, the mayor went out there assuming it was okay. How, well, how did that communication break down? Like the FEMA didn't talk to the town or the t town didn't talk to the FEMA or, I mean, he, he went out there and he, I mean, it didn't look good. So um, in terms of, we, we did talk to Dan Allers about it um, because it wasn't permitted for Fort Myers Beach. It was permitted for Fort Myers, but it was not permitted for Fort Myers Beach. Got it. So it was the zip code thing? It was yes. the zip code thing. Okay. Um, when you're talking about, you know, we've had a lot of people, and, and I've read it elsewhere too, when that were upset when FEMA came down and measured spots and people thought they were getting trailers, that that's, that that's what that was for. And then realized or were told that they couldn't do it because it was in a floodplain. It was in a flood area. Is that correct? So it's partially correct. Um, so the, the process when we work with folks, we, um, first of all, we, we, we have to determine if they have enough damages to be eligible for what's called our direct housing program. There are a number of different uh, approaches to direct housing, including we're, we have a we have a contractor right now that is doing direct lease of apartments. Uh, we also have multifamily um, repair. So if somebody has a multifamily unit down here, we can uh, work to repair the unit if it falls in for a certain uh, approach. And then the last is is trailers, and trailers can be either in a group site or commercial pads, if we can find commercial pads available. And but our preference is always to put them on on their current lot. So in that so through the process of doing that, um, then one of the reviews is floodplain. And the, the state requirement and the local municipality requirement um, requires the, the um, structures be above the base flood elevation. What, what, that's, that's one of the things we've actually tried to work hard on to try to get. What's the waiver. percentage of Fort Myers Beach that is not in a floodplain? All of Fort Myers is in so, so the reality is there won't be any trailers from FEMA. That's not correct. Well, okay, so how do you fit them into the floodplain? Then? Yeah, so just last week, we've been working with the state and looking at all possible alternatives. One of the alternatives is temporary use of travel trailers. These okay. are the mobile mobile travel trailers, road ready, with wheels, uh, with with tongues that could be taken out uh, in advance of sure. a future storm. That was just approved last week. As of, I can tell you that this this week. We just now met with the mayor and his team this week to go through how we're going to work on the permitting with that together. We've just issued eight permits today. Eight permits. Eight permits for eight trailers with two dozen more trailers um, in evaluation to be put out in the next coming weeks. So we had like a catastrophic uh, a hurricane here. That, obviously, you've seen the damage. It's 101 days after the storm. Why is it taking so long? So 
as as you rightly point out, and in my experience, I've never quite seen this level of devastation and destruction. It's catastrophic. It's horrific. Um, and as you know, and m many of the folks here, including the first responders themselves, have lost everything that they own. Um, so uh, we are doing things for FEMA uh, that we don't normally do. I for see. example, um, commercial property de debris removal or private property debris removal, that's something we rarely, if ever, do. We approve that so that we could get something like 26 million cubic yards of debris, about 10 million cubic yards of debris off of Fort Myers Beach. Just to put that in reference, 10 million cubic yards of debris would fill the Hertz Arena 10 to 11 times from bottom to top. That's how much we've taken off the beach. Then you've got to get all the utilities working, water and, and sewers operating, not just to the main road, but out to the fingers. And the, and, I hear and what the you're saying. Lines. I hear what you're saying about the debris and all that. But the, but the thing is, if, but if, as far as the housing goes, you've done this before, like in Punta Gorda or maybe New Orleans or something like that. And when FPL has a major catastrophe like that, their trucks are like waiting right outside the storm. Where are the United States of America? I don't understand why FEMA's trailers weren't sitting somewhere ready to say, OK, it's time to rebuild build your home. Now, maybe not at the 30 day mark, maybe 60 day mark or something. But now it just seems like you got to we're getting so much closer closer to the next hurricane season where they got to come out. So trailers are staged and they are ready. Um, our staging area is in another part of the state on the on, and they're they're there and ready to go. So and have been for a while. Um, the challenge is getting the debris cleared, getting the utility set up. A lot of what washed in in the storm and then washed around in the storm is contamination on the ground. That also has to be looked at, right? So we're in that process of doing that. Um, so, so we'll install them if we possibly can. Gotcha. Now, when you whoops, sorry. When you were when you were talking about coming out and and measuring and do all of that. So the first time that you came out. <clears throat> sorry. Okay. So it's not. The first time that you came out to measure and do all that was to assess that was to assess if there was enough damage for folks to get a home. Yeah. So the, the, in order to be approved for what's called our direct housing program, you have to have uh, greater than twelve dollars per square foot of damage to your home. Um, another another thing to note in, in Lee County. Um, over 2,000, almost 2,000 people have gotten what we call our max grant, which means they got $37,900 for their uh, structure and $37,900 for the contents of their home. Um, 2,000, that's about $75,000, that, that, and that's 2,000 people got that in this community. Okay. So we've put out $7 million of rental assistance uh, for folks on, on Fort Myers Beach to find and rent another facility. So. So that's another program that we've been put out. And we've put out almost $45 million for homeowners assistance to assist them with repairing or replacing their structured homes. So if somebody- then, I just wanna ask, and then typically you, so typically even before, it, on the website it says, even before an on-site inspection, a direct housing official, an environmental, and a historic preservation advisor, and a floodplain management specialist coordinate to determine if the site is in a special flood hazard area. So did that go on before? Yes. As it's, okay. So the, you, before anyone came on, you knew that it was clear that it was in a flood zone, right? So, so the first thing we do is that that process of looking at the site, making sure it would do this. It has to fit within the building standards of the of the town of Fort Myers Beach, the setback requirements, et cetera. The utilities have to be inspected. And then one of the reviews is, yes, um, environmental historic preservation, including the floodplain review of that spot. The only place we can't technically put a trailer is in a vector zone or a floodway and that high coastal that coastal special flood hazard area um, called the Limwa. Um, then we look at the building the codes. It, it's that's the, a new the government has I these letters that, for everything. Is, is that an acronym for Tim? What does Limwa stand for? He's our floodplain manager. Limer, limited wa moderate, moderate wave, wave action. action. Yeah, when he mentioned the uh, vector zone, which we call V zones as well, right. you have a V zone and AE zone flood zone. Uh, when you have a Lemois line, basically what you're talking about is you have a the AE zone and a V zone are two different flood zones. V mm -hmm. zone is more strict. With the Lemois line, is anything that's seaward of that actually has to follow the more strict regulations. Okay. So and then anything seaward of that is 
So there are areas that technically within Fort Myers, kind of in the center of the of the island, so to speak, that technically could have a trailer. The challenge then is that trailer has to be at above at the base flood elevation. That's why we've been working with the state. We've looked at all possible alternatives. We can't raise on many lots here high enough and get scaffolding around that trailer. That's why we've been pushing hard for this, this temporary waiver to put the temporary use of travel trailers for those, those folks that can put a travel trailer on their lot. And so a travel trailer, it would be one with wheels, which that's, is- That's correct. Different than a mobile home, which doesn't have wheels, that's set and structured, and, and that anchored and that's down. okay with the what's that national flood insurance da -da -da -da? Yes. So one of the things we've been working, and that's why it has taken some time to work with our floodplain managers in our regional office in Atlanta, Georgia. That's Tim Russo, who's sitting at the table right next to us, mm -hmm. um, and and the state's floodplain manager to to determine and 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 working then with each of the cities and municipalities in the county to uh, to to work with them on the permitting and the approach for the use of temporary travel trailers. We've been working on that for about five weeks now, uh, five or six weeks, uh, and we just got approval and authorization. FEMA approved the use of uh, temporary trailers. We'll be telling, we'll be full, uh, officially announcing this and having a press conference uh, about a week week and week from now. Um, and we hope you'd be there to cover for that. sure. Okay. How, so I just want to ask. You're one monopolizing more thing. the I know. show, well, dear. Well, it's all right. <clears throat> so. You know, the unfortunate thing, and I mean, this is not, you know, it is, I guess it is what it is, but the fact that it has taken so long for a variety of reasons, as we've elucidated here today, but the time, the time is ticking, right? It's 18 months. That's correct. Uh, that's correct. Um, yeah. The and time, there's, is there any way to get an extension on that? It's 18 like months you, from the day of the storm, not yeah, the day you, yeah, you unlock right, the door. Right, right. Right. So is there any way to get an extension? Like, sorry, because... You know what I'm saying? So that that would be a discussion between the state and FEMA at, at the point okay. down that road and determining if there's still a need. Our, our primary goal is to try to get get folks into a safe, safe place and, and, and to ensure that our team has a high sense of urgency to do that. Right. To make sure that we're constantly pushing on that. Um, and and one of the one of the goals and, and Mike Piper and his team, what they do is they work with every survivor, calling them once or twice a month to make sure they're working and making progress towards the recovery for their home. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, you know, even getting somebody to make their um, their homes uh, minimally habitable. In other words, a bathroom that's working, a room in a home that's working, a place to cook that's safe to cook in. In other words, you don't want them squatting in the in the trailers. You want them rebuilding their home, which as is really what possible. people on the beach. How would you rate grade FEMA's performance on Fort Myers Beach when it comes to getting them housing? So, so um, I can tell you that we've never um, had this fast of a debris removal project. Just the housing approval, part. Just the housing I understand. part. But the the debris is the critical first step. You can't put the home back together if there's on top of debris. If there's a home on top of your home or a boat on top of your home. Right. So the first step is getting that debris cleared. And we expedited that in pretty, pretty, pretty fast amount of time. Then the next step is getting all, all the, the utilities and all that. And I think we're, we're, that has gone very well. As you said, FPNL is probably one of the best in the country at, at hurricane response and recovery for electrical. Um, and that, that has gone well, the sore in the water. So um, we're about where we generally are in all disasters. We've got 10,000 people that are housed in trailers right now in Louisiana. Um, and it and it unfortunately takes time, and that doesn't remove the devastation and the challenges that creates for the survivor. And we know that, and that's why our team keeps pushing. Are, are there are there lessons to? I think you were saying that this level of devastation is, you know, is significant. And and um, are there lessons to be learned to put into effect yes. here out because yes. it is. Like this is the specialty of FEMA to manage emergencies. So, is what has come out of this process for the so, agency? That's a that's a great question. So, um, I we do this thing not to to minimize this subject. She doesn't do this get a lot thing of those about bells, the bells. I don't why. get a lot of bells, and to get one from you guys is I. I she feels special, everybody. Do. Thank you. 
Oh, that is a great question. Um, we're constantly trying to improve ourselves and how we operate. And we've learned and made mistakes on this one. We do make mistakes from time to time, right? On this disaster, we have, we have learned about the floodplains. This was a perfect storm in some ways. What you had here, obviously, you know about the size of the devastation. 40, over 40% 40 of the hotels were damaged or destroyed, and probably not enough hotels to serve the, the tourist population here in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. So that is a challenge. During COVID, people moved down here and worked remotely, and it was an affordable, great place to work, uh, except that 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 created a shortage of affordable housing <laughs> and the prices and the real estate prices. And I think you probably know about that better than yep. I do. So when you think about all those things together, and then you have a county that has 34% of this county is in a floodplain, right? So unless we have a trailer parks, you know, or the county or the state or the, you know, the local municipalities have, you know, tra trailer parks or, or condo buildings ready and empty and vacant waiting for the next storm, it, it, that's, that's the process it's going to take to do that and try to figure out mm -hmm. how we get that. So what we've learned about that is how we do our floodplain reviews, how we kind of work with our regional staff in Atlanta to look at our states and, and work with the state to identify multiple locations. We've, we've gone through hundreds and hundreds of commercial sites, contacted them, and hundreds of locations that we're looking at to put group sites in this disaster. Well, you know, even Have you gotten a response from people from, from those commercial sites? Yes. Like yes. positive? Like, yes. 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 Um, Sorry. Not nearly enough pads that, that we need because people uh, from the northern states, as we speak, they've got their trailers hooked up. They paid their deposit on their commercial pad last year and they're planning to come okay. down. Yeah. So, but yes, we, we have a number of trailer parks that are responding positively. So even when DeSantis came to town and had a press conference at the Yucatan, he said there, you know, he wants the trailers on people's property immediately. And there's, there's still, there's still not a trailer on anybody's property. Are you working with, uh, with, with the state and, and at what point, how many people want a trailer that you know of on Fort Myers beach? Uh, the rough numbers of folks that are eligible for direct housing on, on Fort Myers, there's about 200 people that, that have qualified for direct housing. 200 uh, and like that, homes? And 200. that could be for rental okay. assistance, for, for um, temporary sheltering assistance, where we pay for the hotels, and, and direct lease, direct lease apartments, commercial sites. Again, the direct housing, it's not just a trailer on your sure, lot. It's right, also right, a commercial right. site or a group site. It's not, yeah, it's not just the trailer, it's, it's the funding for other, you know, other places to live. But as you said, and as we know, it's really expensive. So I have, I mean, how have you been able to balance affording people a place to stay in a hotel or rent when it's, it's through the roof here? So we adjust our, our, the amount we will pay to a okay. fair market rent based upon um, what we experience in that market. Do, in what is that? What is the fair market rent? Do you, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I just did. But Michael knows. All right. <laughs> Speak up. I got here. you. I got Sorry. You. The fair market rent is based on household composition for the county. So one bedroom FMR is different um, in this count Lee County versus DeSoto County. Oh, yeah. Um, so the fair market rent uh, varies to uh, county to county. And how much is that, like price wise, in one this bedroom, county? I believe one bedroom was around fourteen hundred dollars uh, for the FMR. For how, fourteen a, a month? Yes. Okay. Is that, if anybody in the audience has any questions, please. I mean, don't let us monopolize everything. And if anyone's watching, we have a nice big audience. If anyone's watching and has a question for for the folks at FEMA, we really appreciate you guys. Coming I was on. just it's getting really ready nice to say to that do we you do appreciate do you coming on and, and hit, sitting in the hot seat yeah, or the warm seat. Yeah. Well. We're happy that you had had us here. I really, and I've been watching the show. I like the show a lot. Oh, um, stop! I like you. I like Nobody way, ever says that. Like You're the, way, the first person, no, so thank you very you much. Great. But I also want to say this community has rallied. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mayor Dan Allers. You know, Jennifer Dexter, the, the public mm -hmm. affairs uh, information officer, putting all that information on the website, making it accessible, right? Danielle um, Felton, who's been at the Emergency Operations Center as a liaison and now working with the mayor and the team, the permitting office, your fire chief, you know, fire mm -hmm. chief uh, Martin, I think his name is. Yep. Yes, Ron you know, Martin. Those first responders and, and the community itself coming together, you know, at your events. The fact that we see Wahoo Willies. I've met the folks on the other side of the bridge at Benita Bills, Kirk, and met with the, mm -hmm. you know, the folks that, you know, go there. Uh, when I see the restaurants coming back, when we see schools hopefully coming back, you know, uh, these are the things that, you know, get, and, and places where the community can gather. So this community is rallied for each other. So somebody says, please repeat the contents amount we received for home, but not contents. Uh, does anybody have an answer for that one? 
37 each. So contents is still the same, 37, nine. However, we only pay for contents up to the bedrooms that were occupied. We don't pay for extra bedrooms in your home that are not occupied. Okay. There's your answer to that. Uh, I don't see it. Oh, somebody wants you to explain what that means. Good question. We will pay for if you will say a three bedroom home with two baths uh, for contents coverage. If you only occupy one bedroom, we will only pay for the living room, um, kitchen, um, kitchen bedroom and one bathroom for contents. Uh, However, for home repair, it's a square footage of a home. Okay. Gotcha. So uh, is, uh, looking at back at how things went, again, this is an unprecedented tragedy for us here on Fort Myers Beach. What do you think you could have done better? Do I tell him it was a good question? No. <laughs> <laughs> because it's very similar to the one I asked about what you've learned. So, I mean, he's kind of dovetailing off of that. But yeah. go ahead. No, I mean, oh, he's copying you, did you say? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, you know, I think what we've learned, what we could do better is we need to keep communicating, reaching out, doing the town halls, getting folks the information you need. It's a very complicated process. There are a lot of checkoffs. Everybody's individual situation is different. We work with individual survivors for their needs. That said, we could do a lot better job getting that word out, communicating, communicating, communicating. For people, because we've heard this too, that applied and were denied, and they, you know, it, it, and there is an appeals process, correct? Correct. Would you encourage people to, I mean, you know, people are kind of downtrodden and they're like, ah, what, what holds up? What, what could be a reason that someone got denied that would, you know, they should pursue it because they can, they do qualify? Yeah. So there's a a three of another little little acronym. It is another good question. Thank you. Um, go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, that's enough. I have a little acronym that I use called TART. You have to tell us. T stands for tell us. You have to tell us what's going on and when things change. Maybe you were staying at a friend's couch, but your friend no longer and wants that couch back and, and is tired of cooking, right? So maybe you, and you no longer have a safe place to live. You need to tell us your case. The second thing is you have to advocate for yourself. You have to appeal, right? And then you have to read what we send you. And this is the, the, the and then you have to tell us again uh, when things change. So reading means that sometimes you get a letter and it may say you are found ineligible. Well, if you kept reading, we need the, the copy of the insurance policy you sent it, sent us when you scanned it, it was upside down and backwards and we can't read it. Can you please send us another copy? We need a copy of your power bill to verify your address to make sure that you are actually living at that address with your, that you said you're living at. Unfortunately, in disasters like this, we know that there's identity theft. We know that there's fraud cases. Close to 40% of our cases, we believe some, that are potential fraud. That has to be reviewed and has to be verified. Right, it brings out it brings out the best of people and the best things that you can uh, in people in communities, but it also brings out other things. So one of the things that we heard the most, or I heard the most of, because she works during the day and and I don't, I just read people's emails sometimes, is that they would uh, FEMA would say you kind of were sending out somebody to measure your lot, and and so they send must send a contractor out because the now that now the homeowners got hope that they might have a trailer they could live in and help rebuild their home so they don't have to drive somewhere uh, and stay in a hotel or something like that. And then they measure the lot and then they're talking to the contractor and then it turns out they're in a flood zone and uh, they're never gonna get a trailer. So how do you fix that so that the, the per- whoever that person is says, no way, Jose, I'm not coming to your house because you're never gonna get one. Yep, I heard about that actually here at one of the town halls at Fort Myers Beach and also at and Pine Island. That is one of the things that has been fixed. We now do what's called a soft floodplain review before we start that process to help people manage their expectations, especially when we have this base flood elevation issue. And I guess that was my original question. When I read that, it said on on the FEMA website that you do all this review beforehand. So do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You you know what I quoted, right? Yeah. Okay. So the process was that the process was that that came the, the floodplain review and that base flood elevation, they can only determine that once they go out and visit that lot and and, oh. and so and then verify with a geo what we call a geo tag. It's like using a GIS like your GPS mm-hmm. on that on that spot. But what we now do is do that review on the front end 
a soft review to look at our floodplain map with the address to, to just determine if we think it may be problematic in terms of that base flood elevation. We were called last week and we were told not eligible because we were only doing mobile homes and we would only be able to do a travel trailer. We had been approved and orange paint was put on our driveway two times in the last three months. Now you say you're going to do travel trailers. Does that mean we are eligible again and back on the list? So um, one of the things that we've been doing, those eight, eight trailers I just told you about that, mm -hmm. that we're working the permitting now with the town of Fort Myers Beach, we went back through uh, and we are going back through everybody's cases that was previously found ineligible for the space flood elevation, reviewing their case and determining if they, if they um, may be eligible for this temporary travel trailer. We, that's the eight that I talked about. Um, those were the, fo the folks that we knew that we didn't already have any issues or concerns or problems on their lots here on Fort Myers Beach. They were called, I believe, yesterday, Mike. Um, and uh, one person had found, in a, uh, we had about uh, 13 people that we were calling yesterday. Um, and eight of them uh, uh, still wanted the trailer. Mm -hmm. One one had found another means and one did not want a trailer. I see. So should people should people revisit? Should they yeah. call Which, now what do they do? That, that this has changed or wait for you guys? I don't think they're going to wait for you guys. But what? What's so we're happen? proactively calling out okay. everybody, um, you know, uh, so but. They can always go to our disaster recovery center, which is at 130 Connecticut uh, Ave, I believe it is, here on Fort Myers Beach, right behind the uh, Beach Baptist Church. And they can pull up their records and look into that um, and, and flag that. I, they also can call our 1-800 number um, as well. Okay. How long you talked about people advocating for themselves, and I, and I get that. But this is, it's super overwhelming for someone who's, you know, never been done through what they've been through and has never done it before. Do you guys have advisors? Do you have folks in place, you know, not to speak for people, but to help people kind of navigate this really arduous and complicated process? So that's why we have these disaster recovery centers. We have seven of them these disaster recovery centers across Lee County, that they can go in in person and talk to somebody. They can pull up their case if they need documentation, hopefully give them advice um, about how to what what they may need to, to, to do their appeal, for example. Yes, that's always available to them, as well as we always ensure that uh, the Small Business Administration is there as well for businesses and individuals that may be eligible for an SBA loan. Currently, the SBA loans, I think it's up to over 200000 that you can you can obtain, and it's 0% interest and no payments for a year. All right. So if anybody has any questions for you guys, will you, did you want to, I'm sorry, did you want to say anything else? You didn't really say much today. I just want to make sure I don't cut you I short. Just, and I just wanted to ask, where where can people, if they wanted to take a deep dive on um, the data for you know, the monies that have been issued and where it's gone, because you quoted some of that, that information. Go ahead. They can go to the Disaster Recovery Center and they can take a deep dive in their case. Um, they can also but call. I meant like, say I wanted to see how much money, I know you guys issued a press release about $4.4 billion that's gone out, like to see how much has gone to this community versus that, not versus, but this community or that community. So the media, um, our news uh, external affairs department does um, send that information out mm -hmm. and it can, if it's requested uh, per area, it will be available. Can, okay. you, can you clarify the, uh, the SBA loan? Is it 0% for everybody in the first year, no matter what your credit score is? So I'm, I, I'm not, from the SBA. He's uh, walking so I, well, it back You did now. say 0%, so I want to make sure, because that wasn't what the SBA lady said on the phone. I mean, when she was on the show. So I just want to make sure that's correct. You're getting cue cards now, so uh, there might be something coming down the pike here. <laughs> All right, so I, yeah. is it 0%? Because what, what, I, what I when I was at the last He's home saying home. no. You take the mic. Take the mic. I, I want to make sure that's clear, because people are saying it's not 0%. Yeah, I don't 0%. want to. Yeah, the SBA uh, approach right now is for one year, if you accept the loan, the first year, they're not going to charge you the interest rate that you signed up for, nor are they going to require you to make a payment during the first year. So first year is 0%, no payment for individuals. No, I, I, I wouldn't say 0%. The percent is still there that there was uh, granted when the uh, uh, loan was made. Yeah. It's just not charged to you the first year. Is so it is put it charged on, the on the back end? end? No. Okay. So it is zero percent then in the first year. That you're not you're not you're not charged. You're, you're not yeah, paying not. a payment and you're not charged any 
okay. interest I during see. that first, so, year. first year. You're getting you're getting free money the first year. That's exactly right. Gotcha. And you have uh, okay. usually six months. In this case, I'm not sure, but maybe longer to accept or deny the loan. I see. So it's a nice. Can you tool. take some of the money and then deny it, and then uh, just keep the money? I would. No. I would. I would. <laughs> I would. Defer to the SBA. That's a student. That's a student, that's a student yeah. loan. That's not an SBA loan, but that's for a different show. Hi, do you have a question? Come on over. Come on over. Come on over. I've been to FEMA and SBA thirteen times since October second. We got no FEMA money yet. We lost our home on Siesta Bay, right on Summerlin, and been there October second. Was on TV with my sister on Wink News. We've received nothing. Um, got approved for the SBA loan uh, a couple months ago, and it's in the work still. But it is, um, the first payment is due when, a year from when you get the physical loan, which was supposed to be in November, but it's still in the process of being approved. Even though we signed all the paperwork, mm -hmm. um, we had to submit a contract with the buyer of the home we're trying to purchase, because we're not rebuilding, our house was ruined. Um, and so now we're just waiting and we and the money comes in over a period of six months. Like if you're getting $100,000, they don't give you a check for $100,000 when you get the loan. You get it in increments over a six month period and you have to prove or show where you're putting the money. Like if you're giving it to a, like a- uh, you, have, you have a question for these guys? So we well, I just wanna know what I've been waiting now 100 days for FEMA and not heard a word. Thank you. So all I can a, after the after the show, what I would recommend is you talk with Mike because Mike is our expert on individual assistance, and he can look okay. into your actual case for you, and we can we can try to figure out what's what's going on in your particular Thank case. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for coming over. All right. So um, uh, d d come on down. Come on down. We want to make sure everybody can hear your question, and uh, you know it's not often that we have the whole FEMA team here. So come around and tell everybody who you are and. I am Bob Baldrige. I live at 131 Falkirk, and um, I have an SBA loan, and it's not interest-free, even for the first 12 months. It's almost 5%, and they want receipts for everything you're doing. It's a very cumbersome process, and I finally just said, screw it, and I went and got my own loan because it's just too troublesome. I had to pay $580 to put the loan in and actually get it certified and approved for the state. And it cost me $500 and now I'm out $500 for that. Well, why, why was he charged uh, the five? Well, he's the I know he's not the, the SBA. SBA so I, I, you pay I, for the notary and you pay for the actual county to record it. And the county records it and taxes you on that money. I see. All right. Well, thank well, you for sharing. Uh, well, I think it's okay. good to get, you know, he's, le he's letting people know that his experience, his experience with, with right. the SBA. So um, I want to make sure that if you, I didn't leave yeah. anything on so, the table here. Um, just so everyone knows, the deadline to register is January 12th. Um, please get the word out um, to to that. Um, we've already extended it um, twice now. Um, and um, and the deadline what? To apply for? To, to the deadline for applying for um, FEMA is January 12th. Um, at 11:59, of course. Um, if, and everybody who was affected after January should, 12th. should yeah. apply. Yeah, Every, everyone. Yeah, there's got to be a deadline at some um, point. Everybody that thinks they have, they, they may be eligible or had damages um, or have needs, they should apply. Um, and that number is 1-800-621-3362, or they can go to any of our disaster recovery centers to apply, or online at disaster assistance. Gov. Well, thank you guys for coming. I just on. want to ask, how okay. long do you think you're going to be here? No, uh, I mean, not today, not not on the show, because we're almost done. But I mean, here in the area. That's also a great question. Thank you. Louder, louder. Till everybody is homed, housed. We are now. Committed. He's just playing up to her. FEMA is. <laughs> uh, no, she's really super. Thank um, you. <laughs> I watched the show. Um, so no, FEMA is committed to the recovery process. So as I said, we got here before the storm. We will be here for months, if not years ahead to make sure that these communities can recover. Well, thank we're going to hold you to that. Thank you guys for coming on. Can we, you one more question Thanks. from the audience. Come on down and then Karen's going to come on. 
Yes, uh, Jerry Kemp, and we live at 5698 Estero Boulevard, lost everything. No house. They came down. FEMA looked at the property. We applied. And it's a nightmare, like uh, Bob just said, when you get a FEMA or an SBA loan, the paperwork that they want is absolutely mind-boggling. It isn't easy, and, and you tend to give up. The other thing is, is we were told that this 37,900 and then for content and then you get 37,9 again for rebuilding or whatever it is um, that uh, we were denied. We had some flood insurance. We got paid some flood insurance. We got denied totally because I guess the wind insurance doesn't think there's any wind damage on the whole island. And so we got denied um, our money or getting any money because they said we had flood insurance. So for the people, my question is, who really is eligible? I mean, just because we got insurance, we can't rebuild our house. We got no content insurance from flood and we can't rebuild our house in $193,000. So how do you qualify for that money? Those two thirty-nine seven thousand thirty-seven thirty-eight thousand dollars $37,000, $38,000. Yeah. So, First of all, um, thank you. Sorry for your loss. I mean, that, and 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 it is devastating. Um, and it is, and it is hard to go through this process when perhaps all your paperwork and everything that you had in your house is also gone, right? So we know that this is a very very traumatic uh, experience for anybody that's that's a survivor. Um, what I can tell you as is Congress and the and and the way the law reads. Um, we can't duplicate benefits. So if an insurance company provides you, you know, co coverage or benefits, we can't duplicate that. Taxpayers have said that. And if you had insurance, we have to wait to see what your insurance, unfortunately, is going to is going to cover and pay. Uh, you can still have an inspection. If you still have needs, um, you know, you may be eligible, but it sounds like in this case, and that's why again, advocate, appeal to see what your needs are. If you're if you're home insurance, there's also. Uh, myfloridacfo.com, um, I believe is uh, is the Florida site. If you're insurance, some of the insurance companies, um, uh, you can report to the uh, CFO of the state of Florida if you're having problems with the insurance companies giving you the denial letter because that denial letter then tells us that you may be eligible for other needs uh, assistance from FEMA. So it's it's going through the process. It is it is I you know it is a very challenging process from FEMA and SBA. Um, and hopefully the, that's why we put people here to try to give you that advice when you go to Thank our you. disaster recovery Thank centers. you for the question. Thank yeah. you guys for coming on. And hopefully if you have any an individual questions, you can ask, ask the guys, all guys, right? All, all, and, no. and one lady, sorry, I didn't, I didn't. Wow, they got brought a whole team. People. Ask I, the guys, I, I, you can ask I, the guys. I'm not afraid to say guys. Thing. Just say people, just I know. ask the gonna people. Be, all right, you can ask the, the folks the to find people from FEMA. Thank you guys for coming on, Thank and you. we really Thank appreciate you. your time and you putting up with Kim's questions and uh, all, all the hassle that she gives you. So thank you. Can we get a big hand for the for the guys, guys from FEMA from coming on for coming on the show? Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. All right. Before we get to Karen Woodson, the town council member extraordinaire, I want to tell you about. Hey, if you need money.